education. And uh, um, after I studied architecture in Germany, in Darmstadt Technical University, I um, worked in the construction industry in Germany for many years. And uh, I, I learned very much in the construction industry on site, on the construction site. And one of these examples when I worked in Germany is uh, the realization uh, or the implementation of uh, the headquarters of uh, Procter and Gamble in Germany for Germany and Austria. And uh, but after after I, I worked some years in the construction industry in Germany, I, I changed the sides. I went to the client's uh, side and was um, the, the, the director for the constructions of the central bank of Germany, which is like the Bank of England. And after that, um, okay, your turn. And after that, I, I was the director of the construction of the Aqua Hotellerie, which is a French company with for hotel a company for you know the brands maybe Sofitel, Novotel, Mercure, and so on. And uh, we've uh, built many many hotels in Germany and Austria, and I was responsible for that with my department. And um, yeah, after that, I started my academic career, and I'm now almost for nine years in Austria at the uh, University of Applied Sciences in Graz, where I started uh, as uh, head of the faculty of architecture and civil engineering. And since two years, I reduced my work there and concentrated, focused on um, teaching, just teaching. So what I would like to present to you today is um, <clears throat> this example of the uh, uh, realization of Procter & Gamble main headquarters in Germany, near Frankfurt, uh, uh, in Taunus, in Taunus, near Frankfurt. And this headquarters uh, is the headquarters for Germany and, and Austria and Switzerland. And I will present it to you from the, the first um, concepts, uh, the whole project history and development from the first ideas, first concepts, till, uh, till the... Um, uh, what is the word? The handover. Till the handover. Till the handover. Yeah, and uh, yeah, as as Robert said, uh, you have the uh, the special uh, 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 option to learn some German also. Besides, uh, when you, when you see the okay, next please. What is uh, uh, it is a it is an example of. Uh, building uh, ready for use or ready for application. And what is this? Uh, we, will, we will talk about this, uh, this type of, of, of realization of uh, projects, uh, building ready for use. And why uh, would clients choose uh, this way of realization of projects? What are the reasons for that? And then the whole history of uh, realization from the first ideas from the bid uh, till till the handover, and especially focused on uh, how about managing costs, how about managing uh, schedule and quality. These three pillars, so to say, the main things we we do about. And then uh, in the end, uh, look on the different ways of um, uh, tendering. Uh, which is on the one hand uh, unit price contracts, at least in Germany we have these two types, unit price contracts versus um, lump sum contract. If there is any expression you don't understand, then it's probably a wrong expression. <laughs> Please let me know so that I will try to, to find another wording for that. And we will see the advantages and disadvantages of these individual forms of um, tendering. Do you have in, in England uh, these two forms of tendering also? Yeah. And are there other forms of tendering also, or mainly these two? And unit price. Something, something unit but mainly, unit mainly of some. Uh -huh. Okay. okay. And. At the end, absolutely at the end, just some outlooks uh, for the future, uh, and not, not only for the future, the partnering models, but anyway, 
partnering models, models, you say? Models, models yeah, farming models. I think Great Britain is um, uh, very advanced in that. What is Führen? What says Führen? Yeah, they're, they're kind of the visionary of partnering. Yeah, the so they, they, anyway, I would say it started here. It started yeah. here and we just copied it, that's all. Next, please. Okay, now to the question, what is um, a, a building ready for occupation? One of the characteristics is it's a set price, it's a fixed finishing date, and um, it's an awarding of all in contracts of the entire building or of individual um, construction tasks or packages, like for example, for, um, for, uh, for the, the building techniques, te te technology like heating, climate, uh, uh, sanitary and so on. This could be a package which is given to um, as a construction task, as a package which is given to a general contractor. Um, what are the reasons? Next, please. What are the reasons for uh, building ready for occupation from the point of view of the client? Um, it's one thing. Is it's clear. It's obvious. It's less coordination effort. Yeah. Um, it's all from one single hand. The, the, uh, the, the client gets all from one single hand. What would you think is, uh, from the point of view of the client, what would be the main advantages of that? More control. If you have it in one, uh, from one hand, more control from the side of the client. Not from the other side, so there's more quality control. Yeah, he, he knows yeah. What's going on. because um, when, when, when it's a unit price contract uh, as a client, I, 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 I can control more than I, if I give it all away in one hand. But yeah, that's one point. And what would be what would be other advantages from the view from from the point of view of the client? What would you say? Have you ever dealt with this, <coughs> with uh, lump sum contracts and unit price contracts? Yeah. You're done with that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, so you 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 would you would uh, uh, you would be able to, to tell me what are the, the, the uh, from the point of view of the client the advantages of a lump sum uh, contract. Why why would a client choose a lump sum? It's like cost can uh, like what's the word like cost certainty. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Cost certainty. If I have a unit price contract, I'm not sure what will be the costs in the end. What will be the total costs in the end? And the, when I have a lump sum contract, I have yeah quite a certainty about the costs in the end. The only thing which could change uh, if I have, for example, uh, additional uh, variations. additional variations, like we had it yesterday in the Lego. Uh, workshop where there were every 10 seconds, I think, or every 15 seconds, there were uh, new variations and modifications. Uh, that's that's an important point also. But also, if you think of, uh, for example, guarantee. Now, if you have a unit price, con yeah, if you have 30, 40 unit price contracts, you have 30, 40 guarantees. Yeah, for the. Was war nochmal Estrich? Street oder so? Estrich, ja, ist das selten. Street or. Street. Street, let's say street or suspended ceiling or anything. Yeah? I just want to get this straight in my head. When you say unit price contracts, you say like that the packages are all split up? Yeah, everyone, every trade for itself. They are lump sum packages. No, 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 I'm not explaining myself. Yeah. Like, for example, say you're the client and you tender the public who's the tender. I won. The, I'm the main contractor, and I won the bid. That's a lump sum, but yeah. then ask what the package is to up. Yeah, that would be from the point of view of we always see from the point of view of the client. Yeah. From the point of view of the client, it would be a lump sum contract. Um, but I have also the possibility as a client, yeah, to to, to spread it different trades, let's say 30, 40 trades, one for facades, windows, one for a screed, one for 
a suspended ceiling, one for partitions, and so on and so on. Yeah? So you would have many different guarantees. Yeah? I don't know how many years guarantee you have in England for the one year defects period. Just one year. One year old. Yes. I think it's okay. It, it depends and on what you negotiate. It depends on the contract. Yeah. Okay, okay. It's not uh, given as a rule. Okay, in Germany it's, it's as, like a rule. You always have two years. Now, if you think you have a big project and you have uh, trades in the beginning and uh, we, who will end after some <coughs> weeks, and then could you could you tell this contractor for this unit price uh, trade? Could you tell him uh, the handover will be when we finish in two years, and then the guarantee starts or the default uh, what do you call it? defects period starts? Could you tell him this? Would he accept this? Yes. Yes. He would. He has yes. to the contract. Okay. But that's that's. Uh, if I were a, a, con a contractor, I wouldn't accept it, yeah, because it's a problem. Mm -hmm. Let's say one and a half years later, my my work would be handed over, and the guarantee period starts with this day. It would be a problem, yeah. I understand. It depends on the client what they specify. I suppose yeah. they agree at the start that when they're finished and they get signed off. Yeah. Then their period starts. Yeah, usually it's like like that because it, what what it, there could be many things happening in the un, one and a half years following uh, after he finished his work. It could be destroyed by others without uh, 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 without will or without um, not not by uh, by accident. Yeah, by accident or anything like that. So uh, the the problem is the the lump sum contract would be. Um, like one guarantee from one hand, from one contractor, from the side of view of the, uh, from the point of view of the of the of the client. In the other case, he would have the problem that he had uh, some trades in the beginning, where there ha where there are guarantees starting, and uh, but still the the project isn't finished. The handover didn't happen. Is is it for Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I am totally disagree. Okay. Because what you said now, we can work in the same situation for the main contract. Okay, buy items. Okay, in the end, you have just one main contract is responsibility about the project. All ten years, fifteen years, depending to the contract. Also, the project start what buy item, not lump sum. That's mean not every contract buy items. You have more than is one. You, you have missed that in the introduction. Yeah? So uh, this was introduced as two different options from a, a yeah. client point of view. But Sorry, you're quite you right. Said that in the lump sum, you have just one uh, guarantee about the uh, project. Yeah. You can, in the item price, also you have just one guarantee about the project, the main contract. Yeah. Now, both no, types of the contract. Yeah, there is a difference. With, with, if you have a lump sum contract, you have one guarantee, right? Yes. So. If I have, <laughs> instead of lump sum contract, many, many unit price contracts, let's say 30, 40 unit price contracts, as in... Who is responsibility about all this unit? In the old contract, you have just one main Yeah, contract. that's what I say. No, but he, main. Yeah. He's saying there's two different ways. Either the client will split it up himself and give out separate packages or just one. But they're all basically lump sums, if you want to put it that way. Yeah. I thought you were on about it at the start. Like pricing their schedule or rates or something like a. But I don't know what you mean. Right? Yeah, it's two different ways of contracting. Two totally different ways of contracting. Mm -hmm. One one is lump sum. I give every work, all the trades in one hand to a main contractor. The other way is unit prices, where I have forty traders, one for partitions, one for ceilings, one for screed one for uh, and so on and so on. <coughs> you can give it as unit price, you can give it as a lump sum also, that's not the problem. The thing is, give it in one hand or give it divided in 30, 40, 50 trades, depending on the complexity of the thing. Okay? Uh, then, the other thing is, <coughs> yeah, next please. Now, what we have to say about um, the significance of building ready for occupation is that, uh, at least in Germany, and I suppose much more in Great Britain, 
the uh, significance of building ready for use is increasing or is having uh, 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 much space is, 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 is important yeah it's not uh, it's not an exception on the other hand it's, uh, it's, it's in general it's uh, continuously increasing its significance is that right yeah so um, even when 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 in Germany we had a had a like a, a regression or the, the decreasing phase in general for construction between 1999 to 2004, but even in this time when the general construction was uh, going down, there was an increase of the of the part of the lump sum uh, building or, or ready for use uh, building, an increase of five percent. <coughs> So it has a certain significance and importance for the construction in general. Next, please. Now, we go from the, from the bid to the handover. What are the things, if I am in the, I see it from the point of view, working as a project manager in the construction industry, in the, as, a, as, a, as a main contractor, yeah? What do we have to do there? What are the steps? Yeah, if we if we go chronologically from the bidding to the handover, there are two main types of lump sum uh, contracts. I suppose it's it's the same in, in England. One is a deal to detailed lump sum contract. It means that the contractor carries out only that which is expressively stated in the technical specifications. He alone is responsible for quantity de determination risks. What does it mean? It means that there is a description, a special uh, a technical specification, and he realizes he implements only that. And he, he has to, to, uh, to uh, calculate the quantities and is responsible for that. The other is, this is a detailed lump sum contract. The other, the other is the so-called, or we call it, global lump sum contract. There, the client orders, like to say, one piece of building. He orders one piece of building. He has a reference building or reference object. What about that reference? Yeah, so a reference project where you have to build yeah. something similar <coughs> to so you price it uh, as a benchmark against it. I'm glad that Robert uh, has much more progress in English than I do, so I, I, I rely on him. Thank you. Yeah, that's it. Also, um, the thing is that, that it's, it's a global, it's a global uh, contract where it, it is merely described what the, the client wants and the contractor has to fulfill the task so that all functions are guaranteed for this building task. Got what I mean? Yeah. Now, what would you think is more, uh, what will cause more frictions, maybe? Pardon me? The second one. You're right, it's more right. Why? Because it's not as specified as that done. That's the uncertainty. There's more risk for the second Absolutely, one. you are totally right. That's it. The more, uh, the more the contract is specified, the more I have a description, a specification, the less would be the probability of frictions. Because why? Me as a client, I think I get a Mercedes. You as a contractor, for the same description, which is very superficial, yeah, you would think you have to render, to hand over a VW Polo. Do you have that? A VW Polo or something like that. A very very cheap or very simple car. Yeah? So that's the, 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 main, the main problem about it. So the more it is specified, the more it would be clearer what is the, the what are the thinkings and what is the will of the client. Next please. Now, as I said, I want to, sh I want to, to discuss to you or present to you the, the uh, our our contract and our uh, implementation of the uh, um, uh, uh, 
main administration of Dr. Gamble in Schwalbach, which is near Frankfurt Main. And at that time, I worked with one of the biggest construction companies in, in Germany, one of the biggest main contractors. So I always see it from the point of view of the contractor. But we see it also, what are the advantages or disadvantages from the point of view of the client. Now, to describe the project a bit, it, is, it has a building volume, we say building volume? Yeah? yeah. Building volume of approximately yeah. the area? area. Yeah, yeah. 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 building volume is uh, actually kind of the... Uh, the, the three dimensional? Yeah. That there, the, like the footprint? Like the, well, it depends on just floor space. No, if building volume would be the the sum, the, the, the whole sum. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Would you say uh, what? The whole sum of the building. The whole sum of the building. The whole sum. Okay, thank you. No, normally, it's the uh, overall budget. Uh, so overall budget. For the pro okay. Project, yeah. So let's say overall budget. Overall budget was 33 million euros. Um, yeah, and approximately 25,000 square meters of gross. Uh, square uh, cross area. Yeah? Yeah. It's an office building. Yeah? Total uh, total uh, fixed uh, time of delivery uh, <coughs> uh, for the contract was 26 months, and it was a so-called global uh, global lump sum contract, which means that we had um, a general specification. With um, with a um, uh, yeah we call we call it uh, like um, room data book we call it like that room book room data book yeah it's it's a, a like uh, room specifications room, and so where you already plan in detail yeah. what packages go into the building yeah, yeah. so room specifications and just the general. Uh, description of the foyer, of the reception uh, rooms and the meeting rooms, the office rooms, the um, kitchens, auditorium, there was a big auditorium for events and so on, and just some, uh, let's say, architect, uh, architect and implementation plans as detail, as, as master details, as master details, not very detailed, just as master detail. Just to, to, to introduce it to you, this is uh, the main building. This is uh, an annex to a cafeteria to the existing building. Um, next, please. And here you can see we, we had the view like that. We saw this is all the new, the new building. This is the existing building, the existing cafeteria, and this was the annex to the existing cafeteria. And we had the view like this. And you can see that there is... Uh, the main entrance here, and then we have always uh, the offices alongside the facades to get the daylight as much as possible. And in the in the middle of the building, like here, you have the um, uh, Nebenräume. Uh, oh, uh, I see. Uh, um, meeting rooms, I guess. Uh, yeah, like meeting rooms, like toilets, like kitchens, and all these things. Yeah. Last, army. Surfaces. 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 Yeah. Yeah, part of them. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and you have this uh, was glass meeting rooms, but all this in the in the in the, in the inner of the building, and then you have their glass uh, roofed um, light ones. Yeah, domes like domes, domes like like. Uh, ah, what's the word? Like oh, uh, um, backyards. So it's like, like backyards. Yeah, like backyards. Back like what? Courtyard. Courtyard. Yeah. Courtyard. Very good. I'm, I, it's, for me, it's good. I'm learning here. I'm, I'm really learning because uh, this is very, this is, these are very, very special uh, uh, terminologies. So these are courtyards which are open and only uh, glass uh, roofed in, on the top. And uh, all, also here with glass, uh, these, these courtyards. And in the end, up there, there is the so-called auditorium for the events, yeah? For, for uh, big uh, Procter & Gamble, you know, is an international company and uh, they have often any events and things like that. And next, please. 
And then uh, it's several uh, floors and uh, it's always the same system, the offices to the facade and then the uh, rooms like meeting rooms, uh, toilets, uh, kitchens and uh, stairs and, and lifts and all that in the inner part and these open courtyards and always uh, these offices oriented to the courtyards to get light, daylight and, and to see the green and so on. Yeah? So there you have the roof of the uh, auditorium of the events area and there the glass roof of the annex to the, uh, to the cafeteria of the existing building. This is the existing building. Yeah? The question so, there yeah. in the courtyard, was that like a small balcony or uh, in the, no. like a small inner circle in the courtyard? Here? No, in the, sorry, on yeah. the side. Is that, is this, that a balcony there? Or, well, what no, that? no, you will see. It's a staircase. Is that okay. uh, like a Atrium? Like a helix? Spiral. Spiral, spiral, yeah, thank you. Uh, it's a real cooperation. Uh, like a, it's a spiral, a spiral staircase. And the idea of the architect was, as you know, Sometimes architects have very special ideas. I can say that because I'm, I'm, I'm myself an architect, but I see it also a bit critical. Sometimes uh, it's very. It should, it should. They wanted it to be a schleier. What is a schleier? Oh, uh, uh, a screen idea, but like like a like a like a. Now it's spiral, yeah, but but very light, very light, like yeah, a light, light curtain, a like a curtain, term, like a spiral, like, like a spiral uh, transparent curtain. If the curtain, it should be very, very light and very transparent. You will see it later. It's called a veil. Like yeah, veil. Genau das ist es. Veil. Yeah, exactly. Do you speak some German? No. Okay. <laughs> yeah, good. Perfect. Yeah, genau. Now this, these are the, the sections and uh, uh, the views. What says Ansichten? Views? Yeah, yeah. The views. Yeah. Yeah. So cross section. Cross section. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. These are the cross section from the where where we looked in the first. Uh, you see the auditorium uh, and then <coughs> the, the, uh, the offices and here the offices and this is the old building and the entrance area and here it's, this is the view we had uh, the natural view we had before where we have the annex to the cafeteria, which we built also, and then the new building with this uh, staircase and here and here. And these are the glass topped, the glass roofed courtyards. Next, please. Good. Now, um, um, as we said, from the, the different phases of the, of the project, from the bidding to the handover. Now, the first, there are three three pillars, yeah, which is cost, time or, or schedule, and quality, which which you know very well, I, I suppose. And when we when we focus on the cost management, there are two types of viewing, looking on the costs. I, th I suppose that you have dealt with that already also. What would you say or what, what do you remember or what do you think? There are two, two different, depending on the phase of the project, where I am in the project. In the beginning, I can't be very detailed in looking at the costs. Do a lot of forecasting. Yeah. So, yeah. What, you, what, you, what, what exactly? What, what I exactly mean is, yeah. What I'm exactly asking is, I have two different points of view or approaches approaches to seeing the costs. Um, one is the so-called um, point of view or approach um, uh, related to, to the planning, to the planning, to the design. And the other would be, and this is the beginning, you see there one, one square meter of uh, facade. In the facade there could be several trades. There could be in this one square meter, there could be windows, there could be walls, there could be uh, plaster, there could be um, insulation, isolation. Insulation. Uh, uh, there could be several trades. And I have a general price 
one square meter. The other way of, this is in the beginning when I'm still don't know too much details of the project. When the information is still not too much. When I go further with the project and I have more information, I know more exact specifications and, 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 and uh, uh, wishes, uh, desires of the client, then I can switch, we call it a cost transformation, switch to the different trades where I have for every trade positions and every position is clearly described, specified. Yeah? With, with um, Mengens and masses? Yeah, masses, yeah. With, with unit prices, literally, uh, depending on what... Break uh, down the cost. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, you know, exactly. So this so, is a advanced work breakdown structure translated in the product delivery or... or is that like an Annie, like an Annie C contract where it's like, on, yeah. I'll, you get paid for stage completion after like, say, you have to finish all the first section of the containment and data trunken then get paid. Is that what you mean? It's like stage? But this is literally what he's referring to. Uh, we have here a special subcontract under the contract that you are describing, which is the NEC, and it's agreed that uh, after a partial unit, it's actually uh, paid out. No? So uh, after the first flow, potentially, uh, um, everybody would be paid out with yeah, their unit. Price. That's one point. But here it's, it's mainly the view on how can I calculate my costs, mm -hmm. my, my pre- uh, uh, pre, uh, also for or so. Yeah, the, the planning, actually, the, the plan cost. The plan, the planning of the costs. The planning of the costs. How? Yeah. Here, I see we, we have we have in Germany seven groups of costs, which is uh, the plot and then uh, let me see site development, building construction, technical equipment, exterior areas, and supplementary costs. And if I take now, and we have a system of numbers, for example, the, the building construction is number 300 as a group. This is um, uh, detailed, detailed more and more. So 350 would be the ceiling areas. Can you see this? Yeah, the, uh, maybe we, we, we yeah. should explain this. In, in Germany, we, we have uh, standardized uh, uh, the uh, like basically the planning feasibility to uh, building or, or the construction <coughs> of it, and this is the DIN that is written there. That is basically the German norm, like the British standard. Yeah. Yeah, so in, in Germany, uh, uh, it's actually standardized that way. Yeah, okay, uh, okay. The DIN. DIN means uh, Deutsche Industrie Norm which is like ISO, but for Germany. Uh, but many countries like Austria, Switzerland, and so on <coughs> copied it. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's like a standard, uh, like ISO, International Standard Organization, it's German Standard Organization. B is Deutsch. Yeah? So this is standardized. And then we have, for example, all the parts of a building, all possible parts of a building, all parts you could ever think of have a number. Yeah? And then, for example, the ceiling areas have the 350. Now I can specify or de detail more and more this, these feet, uh, ceiling areas. 351 would be, let me see in English, it's uh, covering, yeah? ceiling covering. Ceiling covering, and then I can uh, even divide it more and more. Yeah? Mm -hmm. I can divide it in uh, different types of screed. Yeah, these ceiling coverings, <coughs> coverings, and then the DIN 276, these standard would end. This is the so-called view or approach of the costs from the planning side. Yeah, more or less, I see one square meter uh, ceiling, and that's it. But now I have to specify it to divide it more and more for the contractor, or even the contractor if he gets just 10,000 square meters ceiling, he would go and then specify it more and more, divide it more and more for the, um, for the implementation. He needs to do that for the implementation. He would take then these different screeds, let's say we take one out, uh, this would be a cement screed, or here ceramic tiles, or unhygrid screed, or foot 
fall impact noise insulation. Yeah? <laughs> do you have this or is it uh, uh, just from the dictionary? It's from the dictionary, but do you, is it in real that you call it footfall impact noise insulation? Uh, impact, impact noise insulation. Yeah. So you, it's like like an implosion of the different parts of the of the bauteil. Yeah, of the building part. Of the building part, and, and, and you divide it more and more, and then you have these screens, you have this uh, insulation, you have the textile covering, uh, you have tiles, and so on. And all this goes into positions of the different trades. Trade of screen, trade of tiles, trade of coverings of, 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 of tiling, or tiling, and so on. Question, did you understand what I said? Part yeah? of the ceiling or part of the floor? This would be part of the ceiling, yeah? Okay. And now I have the same, for example, 352, I don't know the numbers by heart, but let's say 352 would be um, uh, uh, for, the, for, the wind, for the walls, yeah? Covering of the walls or anything like that, yeah? Now it wouldn't be walls because 350 is, is all related how do you to, to, to walls from Germany? Is it plaster or how do you cover Different it? things. Yeah. It could be plaster, it could be tiles, it could be uh, wood, it could be uh, many things. Just on the interior, yeah? That's on the interior. Mean. On the exterior, it's quite like here, but you, you use much more of um, Ziegel. What is Ziegel? Uh, Ziegel. These little, little, little stones it's which are made bricks. of clay. Right. Bricks, bricks, yeah. You use much more bricks. In northern Germany, you would use, it looks very similar, many bricks also, but in the rest of Germany, you wouldn't use bricks so much. You would pick uh, uh, concrete or big, uh, big stones, and then it's plastered. Yeah? But, yeah. I just want to ask, so, for example, I don't know, these are like standards. When you break them down in Germany, so say this uh, uh, walls, how, like how far down does it go? Like does the architect not need the detail, like wall detail separately and say, this is a wall type A, wall type B, one's fire rated for two hours, so it's double boarded by insulation and fire batten or whatever up to the ceiling, and this wall's just, it could be complete, like do you not have to specify? Yeah, and this, D276. I mean, how far does that, how far does this DIM take it? Yeah. Just take it in this stage and just Just to this stage, that's it. You specify them right. what you want for Usually, the project. Exactly, very good question. Usually, the architect doesn't specify too much. He, he does the planning and, and design, and then he, he just till here, he gives the client a general overview of the costs, but not very detailed. That's why, in the beginning, the tolerance of costs is higher. 30 percent yeah? so it's just till here because he the parts of the building he takes all the parts of the building the square meters the square meters of the ceiling of the wall <coughs> the facades and so on and has a price it's a statistical price statistical prices and gives it to the statistical prices and then you get a general uh, a sum of all this is what is rendered to the client so that he knows okay it will be 10 million or 12 million or Eleven and a half, but after that, to be very detailed, you need to to to, to how did you call it to uh, break it down. to break it down. You need to break it down because you have to give it to your when you now you are the the contractor. From here on, it's the contractor's part. Here it's the the, the implementation part. This is the planning part, and this is the implementation part. And from here on, uh, the main contractor takes it over, and he needs to break it down for his subcontractors. If not, it wouldn't work. He needs to break it down for his subcontractors. That is that is why he has to break it down in different packages, in unit price packages, in, in or lump sum packages, but detailed <coughs> positions. For this stage here, is that, you see, so that's the consultant or thing for the client and the planning stage, like a the, the term that we call is it, it, the first was a concept stage, yeah, and this yeah. is standardized in Germany, the DIN uh, uh, 276, and this is now the feasibility study, you know, where we define the specification. That's stage B? 
Yeah, Save. you know, in our model right, that we had, yeah. yeah, so it's, it's a stage two. Oh, yeah, it here depends which one you take. If you go with RIBA or, or CIOB, slightly different. It's uh, when we come to the pre uh, planning, uh, no, wait, this is actually uh, stage uh, three, you know, in RIBA, if you look at the RIBA model. Right. Yeah. So then there's the main contractor, and that's saying at this stage here, then does it depend then on the contract type, if it's the global one or the other one? The two one, the two one, yeah. Exactly, that's it. Yeah. This is the, the concept part. This is what usually the architect does. And then from here on, it has to be much more detailed. That's why it has to be raked down, broken down, yeah, broken down. And the, every contractor, even if, even if the client says, or his architect, uh, uh, consulted by his architect, says, I want to give away all the works as a, as a, as a unit priced uh, thing, yeah, every trade for itself. It needs to be bro break da broken down because the, 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 the one who, the, the, the company who, who realizes it, who implements it, has to know exactly every, every single work which has to be done, has to be described, specified with its masses, with its square meters or... So but, uh, resources or material uh, aggregates uh, that you're using quantities? And then as well, uh, um, the uh, what, what type of work it is. If it's specialist uh, uh, stuff, if you want to have uh, uh, arch, uh, uh, arches over the windows made from bricks, uh, then you have to specify this too. Yeah, yeah exactly. So next, please. <coughs> so what did we do as a main contractor? Uh, as, as, as I told you, I was the responsible person in the team of the main contractor who had to implement the whole project. What did we do in the beginning when we got the, the, the tender to bid for the tender? We look at it in general, we look at it economically, technically, legally. Next please. Which means we help ourselves by what? What is this? Very simple. Even if you don't understand the language, but what is it? You know, it's a checklist, that's it. One of the very simple, but one of the, the most important uh, instruments for construction managers is checklists. Without checklists, uh, you're lost. Yeah? And you need checklists for everything. Why? Because we have to memorize very much. And believe me, the older you get, the less you can memorize. I, I, I know that. Yeah? Um, and you need checklists. You, did, you need checklists to memorize all that and not to forget anything. So, this checklist, just a short look on that. <coughs> we look on the tendering data in general, for example. <coughs> we look on the, uh, what is it called, liquidity? Liquidity, yeah, liquidity if they are uh, financially uh, stable. Problems of the client. Yeah. If I want to tender, if I want to bid and tender, I have to know if this client is is liquid. Yeah, if they have some money. If they have some Credit money. Check on. Yeah, there are there are institutions who can give you this information. Yeah, yeah. Check no their accounts. If they have a low fund. Yeah, if they have a low fund. Yeah, then you you wouldn't uh, pick them. Yeah. You wouldn't <laughs> offer. Yeah, you wouldn't offer. You you wouldn't uh, submit your your bid. Mm -hmm. If I know yes. that this is a client who has a problem. Uh, Money, money problem. Why should I work with him for two, three years and always, please, please, please give me my money? I'm not sure I'm getting my money or not. No, I would, I would uh, offer another tender to another client which, which uh, sent me his, his tenders. So this is one thing. Or how long uh, am I in price premiums? So yeah, it's it's a guarantee, basically, on... on uh, time limit on price, is that right? Time limit on price. You don't know what that is. The, it, it's uh, <laughs> how, how long expression. you, you are, uh, um, are in the guarantee basically for the price unit. Yeah. 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 Or so if, if you have a, a, a work a, a breakdown and you do the work, how, how long are you responsible? When is the change so drastic that you can ask for a change in the pricing? 
Does that make sense? Uh, do you mean, yeah, so if, do you mean if, if I price and then the price of steel goes up and I'm only starting work a year later and, uh, yeah. and it goes up, then that's going to change. So if, I, if you have steel, for example, that was the classical one, uh, um, the steel exactly. price went up. Yeah. And if you have made the price guarantee, you're working at minus because the material price has so increased that your profits <coughs> have been eaten up. Yeah. So, so there's no room for cutting the cost. Well, uh, this depends what they write into this. Yeah? So if they say there is a price guarantee, then uh, uh, you, you have to basically, uh, if you can, buy now. Yeah? This is always cheaper with materials, but uh, uh, then you have the storage costs. Yeah? So this is the, yeah, the, exactly. the, the game that you're playing. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. So there are different, I, I, I wouldn't go too much into it, but you can imagine that uh, you, you have, before you, you submit uh, a, a bid, a tender, yeah? Yeah? you check some things, like for example, is there a penalty, uh, a contract penalty? <coughs> what are the conditions of payment? Uh, how about guarantee, insurance, cost sharing of the contractor? What, what are the things where the contractor would be asked to share costs also? Um, uh, other things cons concerning construction time, documents to be provided. Uh, are there any, res any restrictions concerning subcontractors? In Germany, the client can say, no, this subcontractor, I wouldn't allow that you take this subcontractor. I don't know, is it the same in England? Yeah. Uh, the client could say, no, this one, no. Yeah, they can specify it on the spec. Yeah. So this is also a preferred subcontractor. Yeah. So this is also a limitation or a, or a restriction because maybe me as a main contractor, I would like to have these, 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 and these uh, subcontractors, but the client says no because he knows about him that he doesn't good work or anything or doesn't pay his workers or anything like that, and this could be a restriction <coughs> for me. Maybe I calculate it with the prices of this concrete uh, subcontractor. Yeah. So this is also important for me to know as a, as a main contractor, as a general contractor, to know this in advance. Yeah. Uh, other things like the uh, vice room, wait a minute, this is the last thing I would uh, say. What is the vice room? Evidence protection. Yeah. Yeah, it's essentially that you uh, uh, collect uh, certificates when they are delivered, that what, what you have planned and what they agreed to deliver is the same is what they are delivering, if that makes sense, yeah? Yeah. yeah. Okay, then, uh, also, the Weissicherung, just maybe also, if you have, for example, imagine that you have a building, to, to build a building between two buildings, yeah? It's like a, what is Lücke? Yeah, with a gap or, or? Like a gap. You fill in the gap with a new building, mm -hmm. for example. What would you do? You have to, you have to document the status quo of both of the existing buildings. Why? Because the neighbors on the one hand and on the other side, on the other hand, could tell you later on, oh, there are here cracks and there is this and this and this, and this is caused by your new project, by your new building, by your works. So you have to <coughs> document the status quo of the existing building by photographs, by marks and different things. It's, it's another it's a special topic, not the main topic today, but you have to document this. Site survey? Site survey maybe, yeah. Yes, a site survey is uh, normally the uh, uh, yeah, site relevant, but uh, this is the extended version if you want. Uh, so you would even get the height points from the buildings around you, uh, uh, assess if they have already damaged, you know, that you're on the safe side. Right, right. just so on the extension of the site survey. They're yeah, not only on the outside, they go inside. inside, inside, inside yeah. And they look, for example, are there so cracks, cracks uh, on the walls? Well, yeah. Yeah, you would check the test. Test. for the moment. Yeah, you, you would, uh, yeah. um, in Nigeria, the wall would cost the test. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah but on yeah. the neighbor buildings. On the surrounding buildings. The other building is still not existing. It is going to be constructed. Erected. The conditions, yeah, the condition of the of the of the neighboring building. This is, for example, the Weissicherung, which we call in German the Weissicherung. We may call it uh, evidence uh, evidence protection protection or documentation or I don't know. Yeah? So this is one of the things which we think about when we uh, because this takes time, this takes money and so on. So when we offer, when we bid on a tender, we think about that. In, in advance. Okay, next, please. So, uh, okay. What 
are there still any? The, no, I, I just wanted, because you, you asked about the conditions, and that is actually the, the next point below uh, uh, what we dis uh, described uh, earlier the, uh, to, to get actually the security check. Yeah. It's actually the geology, yeah? so uh, ground conditions. So this is as well specified within this. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, I misunderstood you. I, I, I thought you are, uh, you are uh, giving me the right expression. Conditions, conditions, condition of the of the both neighboring buildings. The conditions are checked here. For example, if I don't have any neighboring buildings, it's just on the meadow, green, green, lush meadows, and then I have to know before what are the conditions of the plot. Is there any contamination? Is the plot um, bearable? Does it bear these loads and so on? This is a plot where I have these risks, and I know that when I <coughs> when I get the <coughs> when I get the the Auftrag, uh, when, yeah, I, the contract. when I get the contract, I have to do these these examinations, these tests, which would cost, which would take time, and which would cause costs and so on. And if so, I have to think about it before also. I have to reflect. I have to, in general, I can say I have to analyze the project in advance. That's it. Why? To be not surprised later on when I've got the contract and then I start to say, oh, there's this problem I have to deal with and this I have to look after and this and this and this costs all and I didn't think about it, I didn't, uh, I wasn't conscious about it. But uh, we should add here, this is specified in Germany and, and uh, in a way we have a norm like this. In the UK, you can actually bring in concerns later on. Yeah? If you realize you, you have been given certificates what the ground should be like, and you find different ground conditions, this is quite usual here, uh, uh, especially when you are over a coal mine in old one, yeah, then the ground may actually uh, uh, go. Yeah. And uh, um, this is quite usual that you then ask for a price, uh, or basically <coughs> a um, higher price for, for your unit of works there. Yeah. Well, you couldn't do that in Germany, not easily, not easily. It would cause a big legal uh, conflict and so on, because usually when you take over the contract, you have dealt with the plot and everything, um, and you couldn't come later on and say, but there's this, there's this, there's this, there's this. No client would accept it's not flexible. What the client would do is, he would say, okay, if there's, there, there is a partition of the uh, responsibility for the plot, Usually it's always the responsibility of the client. But there are exceptions that, that one could say in the contract. Uh, uh, okay, you, you as a contractor have the responsibility, but then the contractor would ask for what? Surely. He would ask for Gutachten, uh, Bodengutachten, yeah, das haben wir natürlich nicht aufgeschrieben. Evaluation of ground, yeah. evaluation of ground, right. yeah, of, of, of to know, uh, are to know there is an evaluation by a specialized company who has like a net soil uh, evaluations and so on. And these, these uh, results are given to the main contractor so that he can calculate this in his bid. So the client, this is client, the client responsibility. Well, the client's responsibility. Oh, he checks absolutely. the ground. He checks the yeah, ground. absolutely. The client um, uh, uh, Stellt zur Verfügung, would be stellt zur Verfügung. Yeah, makes available. Makes the, available the plot, so it's his responsibility. In Nigeria is incompatible with specific. Mm. Uh, you would cite, carry out the soil test. Yeah, but you wouldn't. You that's bring right. But, 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 but think of uh, the following. This bid is sent to, let's say, if it's a big, uh, big uh, project, is sent to 10 main contractors. <coughs> would every main contractor sure. go on the side and make this ground uh, yeah, drilling and all this. No, 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 no. So it's the the, 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 the the client who does it and give this information as a study, like a like a evaluation to everyone. Yeah? A package of paper with all these uh, results. And then every main contractor can calculate. See what I mean? But what the client uh, would recommend and every good main contractor does is anyway to visit the site and to see the conditions of the site and the surroundings and how can I get there, how can I get with my uh, big uh, trucks and, and, and uh, machines and everything. Yeah. Next please. 
Steel cost management, evaluation of tender, detailed examination of planning and quality requirements. Now, once again, checklists. Checklists. This means that we would very detailed now check the plans and the specifications, technical specifications of the of the of the architect of the client side. By the way, till when do we have time? Uh, till uh, two. Oh yeah, we can start with that. Do you want to have a break? Ah, so you want to have a break? Okay, you tell you tell us when you need a break. Yeah. Question. Uh, please. The oldest is the real main contractor. You're pricing on drones. Thank you. You've been for a great deal. Do you have to then uh, employ your like and your package allow for design as well? And like you have, you have to get your own like design consultant. So uh, you also explain. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 But uh, he, he design is a little bit more flexible. It's a new thing, design a bit. Yeah. Which means okay. uh, design uh, uh, gets adjusted yeah. this way potentially. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, so we design to cost or yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Also design to cost and things like that. Design uh, uh, to, to um, for the, yeah. There there are different aspects which uh, which which extend this this what we talk about. But uh, what to, to, to as, as if I understood it right, what you asked or what you said is um, the whole detail plans, is it the work of the architect in this project or is it the work of the contractor? Uh, it is? Does the client retain the architect and is he a designer's responsibility <coughs> for like the architects of those or does that shift and do you as an architect yeah. for the main contract? I got it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. In this particular uh, case, it was because it, it is always a matter of contract. Some projects, the, the contractor gets very detailed plans and everything from the client side, done by its architects. And sometimes, like here in this case, we got just the normal architect's plans, like uh, uh, as I showed you, the ground sections and normal sections and views, yeah, very general. And then some master details and not more and some very general specifications, which meant that we as a main contractor, and as we, are, as we were one of the biggest, number two in Germany, we had own departments who are specialized in doing this design work, this detailed design work for the implementation. We take the architect's plans and transfer it in detailed plans in another scale, in a detailed scale, one to 20, one to 10, and so on, very, very detailed, so that we could work. That was just for pricing them, and then you, it wasn't novated over or nothing, you just basically took the design from the blue, that's just a, like a... It was uh, just for pricing. Indicative, indicative. Yeah. And then you... Took it was just for pricing and for a, uh, for a general knowledge of the project, right. but then the architect would come every, let's say, every week, every two weeks, and say, I want this type of plaster. I want the round pillars to look like that in its surface and so on. What was for us as a main contractor a big chance? Why? As long as it was a big opportunity. Because as long as it wasn't very, very exact specified, we could, when he came and said, I want this type of plastic on the round pillars and we want this and that, we could say, this is not contract, this is more than contract. This is a better quality, this is a, a special desire, wish, or a special feature, if you want. Special feature, and so on, and more money. So, in fact, in the end, it was not 33 million, it was, I think, uh, 38 or so. But mainly uh, uh, based on these very special uh, yes, change orders, change orders. Of the client, yeah. So it has chances or opportunities, but also risks to have a very general specification. Yeah. Should the contract, should the client, out of them, instead of going with a global one contract that he's tech, tech, took, took like well, basically a tight specification on these things, and then he would have had to provide that anyways. If the it, it has it has different um, 
advantages and disadvantages, if we, if we say it in general. For the client side, if it is a more general thing, he has the advantage if he doesn't know, if he is in a hurry, and he, he doesn't know exactly for if he gives the, the contract today, and he doesn't know every detail of it, he still is thinking, and <coughs> client and architect are still thinking, and how will we do this, and so they, they let the project start and think uh, um, accordingly, uh, um, accompanying, accompanying the realized implementation uh, of, the, of, the, uh, of the project, which on the one hand gives him the opportunity to still plan while whilst it uh, is uh, um, constructed or erected. On the other hand, there is the risk that the costs will rise. If in the beginning, when on the time when the project, when the contract is uh, submitted, uh, if everything is detailed and specified very detailed, there will be no surprises at all for the client. Yeah? But the problem is, sofort, yeah, I mean, what is sofort? Uh, yeah, yeah, just a second. Yeah, uh, if, uh, um, <clears throat> but in the other way, when it is everything is specified, he has like a guarantee it will not be there will not be exceeding <coughs> costs. Uh, but means that in the beginning, client and his architect, his team, and so on, the planning team, had to invest much more time in the beginning to be finished before they start really implementation. And there are in the different countries, there are different thinkings. As far as I know, for example, I don't forget you. As far, as far as I know, for example, in the United States, they are more and more uh, finishing the project itself in the planning, and they start to, to, to do the, the first excavation when all plans and all specifications are finished. Which, to my view, from point of view, is good. Why? Because most of the conflicts in Germany or in Austria or in Switzerland are, uh, uh, originate from these very um, uh, planungsbegleitende uh, Ausführungen. Yeah, when, when uh, the individual part is interpreted. Um, yeah, and also when the, when the construction, the erection started already and the planning is going parallelly. Yeah? It's not finished. I, I have, I have, I have. Uh, the the planning is uh, pre-working. Then the construction start, starts, and this is going with the with the construction. In the other case, the planning is finished, and then starts the construction. Yeah, and to my uh, opinion, this is better. And they are starting. They are always thinking in Germany, Austria, Switzerland that it, it is faster if I do it parallelly. But it may be faster, but in the end, it's more conflict-loaded. Yeah, I was wondering, because you said there's a lot of uh, conflict between the, um, like the, what they think is quality. Is there like a way they can ensure themselves against um, a subcontractor, sorry, a main contractor who does like a sloppy job? So yeah, if the quality yeah. is really on the part, sure. is there something they can it, do? It, from the point of very important, yeah, from the point of view of the client, it is a very important thing, because um, Maybe even big construction companies, one of the biggest construction companies in, in, in Austria, which built many things in Germany, for example, the stadium of Bayern München, yeah, Alpine, it's called Alpine. It is uh, bankrupt or almost bankrupt. They, they started some actions uh, to, to support them. Uh, now, I don't, if I have a big, con a big contract, big project taking two, three years or more, uh, me as a client, I don't know even if I check the liquidity and, and, and all that, but maybe in, within three years, the, the situation can be totally different. So there are like <coughs> securities which have to be given bank from the bank through the, the bank of the contractor. I, me, me as a client, I ask for that as a precondition for the contract. When, when we did our um, negotiations of the contract, and it is clear, uh, company A will get the contract, then they have to surrender, to submit within two weeks normally this bank security, which is like a security that first thing that he will come and start his work. Because uh, imagine if he gets the, the contract and he doesn't come. 
he has another interesting, more interesting project, and he says, forget about client Adam. Uh, uh, I go to client XY because it's more attractive. So I would have a big problem. So I have to have this security. We call it Vertragserfüllungsbürgschaft, which is in, uh, in English. That's a guarantee, basically. That you're, but I don't know the exact term. Yeah, that, that you start your contract. <laughs> then there is a guarantee that you fulfill your contract, which means also what usually is done, for example, the, the, the contractor submits after having finished, for example, first floor, uh, he submits um, a bill, yeah, a bill. And then he submits, let's say, 100,000 euros, and it is uh, contracted, or uh, we are, we are, we are hundred, uh, hundred. We negotiated. We, 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 we agreed, we agreed, we agreed that um, it's not paid 100%, but always 90%. So that every bill, 10% of the bill will be left in the hands of the clients till the end. And in the end, he gets all. Retention. It's a retention, yeah. It's a retention, that's it. Which gives me, as a client, a certain certainty, security, that uh, he wouldn't go away. Or if, if there is a problem, I can take another who would be probably a bit um, more expensive. And to have this delta covered, I cover it out of this uh, security. Yeah? But it's a very important point from the point of view of the, of the client, absolutely. Yeah? Good. I think we need a short break. Yeah, short break, yeah? Because it's exhausting in the end. <laughs> <laughs> uh, five to ten minutes break, yeah? <laughs> 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 